Hi there, and welcome to the Kingdom Sexuality Podcast. We're Paris and Alana, friends who have a heart for intimacy and long to uncover God's truth and design for sexual freedom within marriage. Welcome here. amazing time with Kyler and Brett and just getting to some really raw and vulnerable truths over just godly sex and preparing for sex and that mentality um, and introducing it to our couples that are dating and engaged and really understanding the beauty of boundaries and that God made them for our good. And so we didn't want to end this series without addressing the reality of the couples who have come out of either, you know, sexual past or have fallen into sexual temptation during their dating years or courtship and just being engaged. And so if that's you now, this word is for you. And we really felt a heart to make an episode specific for this. Mm -hmm. So Alain and I just had a really good conversation earlier today on this, and we kind of uh, broke this down to three segments, and we want to talk about boundaries and repentance. We want to talk about guilt and shame and its effects and overcoming that, and then we want to really address and just like bring home the beautiful reality of who God is as our Father. And he's not a punisher, okay? Mm-hmm. So you guys, that's going to be our last point, and it's a good one. So Lana, why don't you why don't you start us off into boundaries and repentance? Yeah, for sure. First, I feel like I need to address, and we think we've said it in other episodes, like struggling with temptation while you're dating, while you're engaged, is completely normal, <laughs> and it's something it's we all struggle don't feel with. Shameful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're not the only one who goes through this, for sure. So just wanted to just reiterate that. Um, you're not alone in this. We've been there. Paris and I have our own experiences with this. Yeah. So please know that we are not experts. They're perfect examples of what this is like. We're just real people, too. So uh, we definitely yes. have been there. So, um, But yeah, so let's say here you are. You've had sex, but you're here because you desire and honor God. So you want to bring him and his glory into your life and into your future marriage. So we need to first start by understanding why boundaries have been made and then establishing them now, even after falling into sexual sin, this still applies to you. So just because you have maybe crossed boundaries or gone too far, um, God's best is still there for you. And he is still there to walk you through this and give you his blessing and his freedom when you are married, like once you're married, because there is redemption completely. Um, You are redeemable no matter how many lines have been crossed or how far you've gone. Um, You know, God's grace is sufficient for you. So um, you need to know that and, and really hone in on that and hold on to that tightly that regardless of your past or even your spouse's past, you know, if you guys are in different spaces with, you know, what you've been through in the past, um, there truly is redemption. So the first thing that we should do and are honestly like blessed to be able to do is come to the foot of the cross and ask for repentance. So, um, so to repent isn't just to, you know, there's a difference between repentance and saying sorry, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, because repentance is literally turning the other way from the sin to do the 180, to leave it behind you, to make a change. Yeah. Um, to not just like repent and then go do it again, right? Like no, you need to like this is completely turn away. Down. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, and God desires for you to be free, right? Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen to that. Yeah. So, I think after repentance, what you really need to do is to revisit boundaries. Yeah. So just because you've, you know, in your head, you're turning away from the sin, you need to make a plan. Sit down with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, fiance, whoever it is, and have the chat. You need to talk through it, pray together, and really establish God in the center of it and the focus of it, and then create that plan together. 
And so there are three easy ways to remember or three things to keep in mind when you're creating these boundaries is that they should be specific, agreed upon, and realistic. And so I think something that would be really healthy to do is just to actually write these down so you can physically see them. And so you like, you talk about it, you write them down and talk it out and find someone to keep you guys accountable too. I think that would also be really wise. What are your thoughts on this? No, I love that. And and those boundary guidelines, the being specific, agreed upon, and realistic, those are actually tips from Kyler and Britt. And I was like, man, we're writing yeah. this down because it's so good. And yeah. you know, it, it applies to so much more beyond this too. You know, even within marriage and, you know, when you are like fully blessed to explore each other sexually and just figuring out what you guys like and love and just, you know, going through past, present, and future and everything marriage – um, these are still amazing guidelines to hold yourselves accountable to yeah. and just as a really great map for you guys to, to walk within. But yeah, Alana, no, that was really good. And I think yeah. um, on a personal note, when you touched on redemption there and knowing that you are fully redeemable, as you put it, that you have the blessing to take on of, of Christ's redemption, no matter what dirt is in your past, mm-hmm. that's something I really, really wish someone had just spoken over me. Um, as an engaged person, like when Neil and I were engaged, we definitely had um, shame to work through. And I'm going to talk about the difference between guilt and shame in a second with you guys. But dang, like if I had just known that redemption was in, within my grasp and someone could have just spoke that over me, um, that would have been amazing. Because I actually had people speak the opposite over me. And I thought mm. God was punishing me. And we're going to actually bash that out because that yeah. fires both Lana and I up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're going to cut that lie down. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah. So we're going to go into guilt and shame here, you guys. So uh, this is a big part of um, kind of uncovering our sexual past is we're either going to come up with shame or we're going to either dig up guilt. And there's a huge difference between the two of them. So what is guilt? Guilt is that feeling that comes after wrongdoing. Um And in the realm of being God's children, we're going to replace guilt with conviction, okay? So we're going to be like, okay, that's the Holy Spirit being like, hey, red flag here. So we want to walk with conviction towards repentance, all right? So that is something that I want to kind of flip your minds around. And um, guilt comes from the enemy, Mm -hmm. and conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. So when you've done wrongdoing, you know it, okay? But then we're going to follow that up with conviction. So as you guys walk into redeeming your relationship sexually before the Lord, this is a huge factor to keep in mind, right? Just say no to guilt. Honestly, we allow guilt to bombard us. Okay, so we're going to just stop that now and cut off those deep roots because we don't want that to turn into shame. We don't want that to turn into roots of bitterness or resentment because that is what guilt can ultimately breed within us, right? So let's embrace conviction Turn to the Lord for strength to overcome. Um, And like you said, Alana, an accountability partner is huge in this. Because if you are dealing with guilt or shame in overcoming either presently what you guys are dealing with in terms of sexual temptation or sin or your past, um, having an accountability partner is huge. Just get honest with and Mm -hmm. to really have someone else covering you in prayer and just have the Holy Spirit working in that realm as well, which is really, really beautiful. Yeah. So, because there's power in coming together before the Lord with others, right? We know that Uh, the more are gathered, like the Lord is present with you. So know Mm -hmm. that you're blessed in that too. So with all of that said, talking conviction and guilt, we are going to talk about shame now briefly. So this is something that Kyler said on our last episode. If you haven't heard it, you guys need to go back and listen to it. Shame is actually an identity that we allow to lash onto us. Shame is something that we now identify with. So we believe what shame has to say about us. Shame is a direct attack and lie completely coming from our enemy, okay? So if you are realizing now that you do host shame in your life, this is something that we are just definitely saying right now deal with it it needs to be addressed and brought before the lord and talked over between you and your fiance together um because i'm going to tell you what again personal experience coming at you and this is just my story 
But I did have the identity of shame coming out of our engagement into our marriage. I did not deal with it in our engagement. And I was like, it's going to be fine. Once I'm married, it's going to go away. And I just honestly believe that. I'm like, marriage is going to fix everything. Like, uh, yes. It's going to be great. It's going to fix everything. <laughs> Guys, that's, that was not true on my yeah. behalf. And it's not true for a lot of people's behalf. And I know that no. sounds crazy if you're not married yet, but... It's true. And Alana and I can each vouch for that. So I highly encourage you to really just take a huge step of faith together as a couple and go through counseling um, to really nip that shame in the butt and just deplete it and release it and get it out of your life, right? Like we want to loose those those holds on you. Yeah. Um, so we have talked about this before. Alana and I uh, have teamed up with Faithful Counseling, and they are a biblical um, therapist company that is amazing. Uh, Neil and I have actually gone through them before for therapy, for couples therapy, and, and they are amazing. So on our website, you can find the link to go there, or you can actually use our code Kingdom Sexuality Ministry on the page, and it's actually going to give you guys 10% off. So definitely check that out. I promise you therapy and counseling is worth it when you're dealing with deep roots um, because overcoming guilt and shame and identity um, crisis within that is a really big deal, you guys. And I don't want you to brush it under the rug and pretend it's not there. That's actually the worst thing you could do because it just eats away at you. So run towards healing and deal with it now. Don't wait until later. This is something to be very seriously proactive about in ultimately reclaiming reclaiming back your identity in Christ, you know, uh, both as an individual, as a couple going into marriage and then in your own sexuality beyond that. And so we just wanted to end this kind of heavy episode with just the truth of who God is. So God is our father and not a punisher. So like Paris said, we can both get kind of fired up about this. Um, but we just really want to drive home to you guys that um, God is good and he only gives good gifts. So if you are, you're in your marriage and you're experiencing, you know, hardship or, um, you know, sex isn't exactly what you anticipated it to be. And maybe you had sex before you were married and you're like, I'm just being punished now. Like this is our, you know, (laughs) this is what we get for doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, God's just repaying us for, you know, all these mistakes we made. We just want to tell you that, no, (laughs) like God is good. And we live in a broken world where that stuff is just, it happens, right? Like I just wanted to like James 1 17 just says it great. Like every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights. Yeah. So I just wanted to really drive that home that, that God is good. God intends sex to be good. And so that is his hope and that's his plan for you. And so regardless of what you've done in your past, he sees you through this filter of love Mm -hmm. and, um, through goodness and your past does not determine your future at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, I think on that, Alana, I kind of want to piggyback that with with two more verses, and that's in Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9. And we talked about this earlier today, and Mm -hmm. it was just really, really beautiful. So you guys, um, don't forget that you also have an enemy. I I hear, we hear a lot that people are afraid that God is punishing them, and our response to that is, don't forget you have an enemy, okay? Like, we have an enemy that hates us and does not want us to be free. Like God yeah. wants us to be free. Okay. Like if you just sit down and think about it, God wants freedom for us. He wants excellence for us. He wants blessing and anointing over us. He does not desire for pain to rule our lives, for anxiety and depression and shame and identities that are not from him to rule our lives. So if you can yeah. just differentiate that and be like, okay, we've got a war with the enemy here. And we really need to draw into God here and understand who he is as your father. That is going to help you so, so much. So listen to this. 
Um, this is Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned here, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you you the reason we wanted to share that with you is because for the lord in redemption and asking for repentance from sexual sin you were coming to god in a hot heart posture of humility and you're there for forgiveness and god promises you as you seek his excellence and his ways he is going to fill you with peace and we just want to encourage you to take that and run with it mm-hmm. yeah and i really think like we might like we chatted about this today as well, but it was just how thinking about Philippians four eight, where it's like you know you're thinking of whatever's true, noble, right, pure, admirable, you know, excellent, praiseworthy. Try and put your focus on instead of what not to do, what boundaries yes. not to cross, um, you know, what you have done in the past, what your you know maybe your list of people you've been with before this person. Instead of focusing on that, focus on the heart of God and becoming more like him and yeah. taking on and applying those things from Philippians. Because yeah, his heart towards you. Exactly. It's because when you're harm. No, and when your heart posture is at a place where you're you're pursuing God and you're pursuing, you know, pleasing him and yes. you know becoming more like him, I think the rest of those things will fade naturally. Absolutely. And one thing else we wanted to just talk about was just the promise that is in verse nine, that whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Yeah. What a beautiful promise that if you're putting these things into practice, what you've heard the God of peace will be with you. So regardless of your past, regardless of who you've been with, what boundaries you've crossed, what lines you've crossed, what, you know, people, your husband or your fiance, whoever it is have crossed, you have this hope to cling to that you are forgivable, you are redeemable, and um, the God of peace will be with you. Hey friends, thank you so much for hanging out with us as we dive deeper into meaningful, godly intimacy, tackle the hard questions, and embrace truth while we're at it. We're also on Instagram at Kingdom Sexuality. You'll find our Instagram handle below in the show notes, where you'll also see any other resource links we may have mentioned in today's episode. As always, our hearts are to cultivate deep community and freedom with you guys, and we cannot wait to continue this journey alongside you. We'll see you in the next episode.